it depends on who you are. That's that's a very Eurocentric thing to say, uh, Joseph. You <laughs> white, ma- you Anglo white male mother. It's Germany, anyway. bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. If you have questions, we have answers. Sometimes accurate, sometimes not. But if you would like to ask us a question about anything BJJ related, Bulletproof related, go to the website, bulletproofbjj.com, go to podcast, scroll down and there's a button there and you can leave us a message like these good people. Let us know who you are, where you're from, hit us up. All right, a few coming in today. Here we go. First, a cab off the rank. Do you find you get thirsty at training? I do. I do all the time. I'm a sweaty human and I need to hydrate. Now, the biggest problem is by the time you're thirsty, it's a little bit late. You need to hydrate. And that's why we got Sodi. Sodi is sponsoring the show. We've got all the colors of the rainbow. Great flavors here. We've got salty citrus, salty pineapple, salty berry, and my favorite, salty grapefruit. And they will be releasing two new mystery flavors soon. So... Why do we need this? It's going to prevent our muscle cramps. It's going to help our energy delivery. And it's also going to mean you're less tired, which is an advantage when you're training. If you want to maximize your jiu-jitsu and feel good when you're rolling, you need to get SODI. And when you purchase, enter the code BULLETPROOF20 at checkout for 20% off. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, Hannes here from Germany. I got a maybe a little bit weird question for you. Love weird questions. But I'm training jiu-jitsu in Germany. Recently went to Taiwan to train there with a friend. And I love both countries and both gyms. And actually both of our gyms have some champions with international success. So I got this idea of maybe my home gym and my friend's home gym could have some cooperation, maybe exchange some athletes or trainers for seminars, things like that. Um, but before I approach my, my coach with that kind of idea, I wanted to know what do you guys think from a gym owner's perspective? What Boxes would need to be checked for uh, so that becomes a viable option and not just some crazy student's idea. Thank you in advance for your answer and goodbye. Awesome. Ah, Hannes, what a legend. Yeah, so good. Look, uh, uh, straight out, I would say the thing about seminars is sometimes the gym owner is beholden to their affiliation. So sometimes gyms have to have people from their own affiliation do seminars. Now, if either gym isn't strongly affiliated with any major jiu-jitsu franchise, there's probably not a problem. Like, But I know for sure some of our friends who own gyms, they have to factor in having two or three of the best people or head instructors from their affiliation in, and that's a cost. Even though it's a benefit to the students, they have to factor that in. And sometimes gym owners will lose money on seminars to benefit the students. So it's or, not... Yeah, or to meet the standards of the affiliation. Yeah, and it's not it's not a crazy idea. I think your idea is excellent. Um, but it would also be... It, it would be interesting to understand if the cultures between the two gyms are similar. Now, you train at both of them, so you like both of them. The only other thing I see, which could be a hurdle, is just cost. If you've got to fly an athlete out, it's not kind of the same as the old uh, Olympic Games thing where the government pays for a team to go train here and do that. Jiu-Jitsu doesn't function like that. It's private enterprise. So to actually fly a top person out, like pay for their flights and then pay for the seminar, that's expensive. So I think it's just more to just keep that in mind. And I don't think it's a crazy idea. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, I think it could be really cool. Um, I, I reckon it would largely depend on as well on the attitude of the coaches. Mm. And so if your coach was like open-minded, kind of growth oriented, you know, kind of person that likes new opportunities and thinking outside the box, they might be like, yeah, like I'd love to sort of partner up, have like a a sister team in Taiwan that we can, you know, do shit with. Um, Or your coach just might not be that way inclined. And they might be like, why would I be interested in that? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just trying to make ends meet over we, here. Well, we have champions here already. Yeah, so so in that way, I think it just depends on their vibe. But I think the idea is great. And if you reckon your coach is of that vibe and the coach that you met in Taiwan's of that vibe, definitely worth connecting with. You know, I mean, um, Germany, right? It's so central to Europe. I, I'm yeah. sure that like it's a i'm sure you would get a, you could potentially have a lot of travelers passing through your gym if your gym was open for that kind of thing mm. so it makes sense to connect with other gyms in other countries and be like hey we have a whatever a, a holiday program where people can come in and train here for one or two weeks and yeah. you could establish something um, i think taiwan probably doesn't get the equivalent amount of tourists going there that say germany would uh, not necessarily maybe not not for jiu-jitsu like it, it, plenty you of know people. anyone that's been to taiwan yeah, I know plenty of people go to Taiwan. It just depends on where you're from. Maybe not if you're from Australia, maybe. But but anyway. No, but Europe is the f-ing powerhouse of holidays, right? I, it depends on who you are. That's that's a very Eurocentric thing to say, uh, Joseph. You <laughs> white, ma- you Anglo white male mother. F- it's Germany, anyway. bitch. <laughs> Whatever the Germany, man. I don't think Germany is necessarily as popular in Asia as Taiwan is. <laughs> not for the Chinese. <laughs> I don't think they're allowed to go to Taiwan. <laughs> Man, they don't. They, they're not asking anyone's permission, bro. <laughs> anyway, to the side. It's a great idea. I definitely think you should ask. Yeah, do it. All right, next one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want the best gear for BJJ, you need to go to parryathletics.com. These are our guys. They support the show. George, great guy, great creator. Awesome colors, awesome styles, and also the best fit. It feels great. And that's the thing. It's not just that it looks good, it feels good. And the thing that for me I love the most is I can wear the stuff at jujitsu, but then also they've got that that other side, the cool side where you can wear it off the mats. And they are our exclusive partner in apparel. If you want to get bulletproof gear, you've got to go to parryathletics.com. And when you buy anything at checkout, Enter Bulletproof 20 for 20% off. Oh, yeah. Hey, fellas. This is Ben Hannawell Come to you from Seattle, Washington. Shout out, Ben. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, I got a question. So a lot of times on the pod, you guys reference somebody known as the Dark Prince. And just, <laughs> I got a simple question. Who the fuck is the Dark Prince? How did he get this badass name? And, uh... Yeah, I'll see you in the Facebook community, and uh, thanks for everything you do. Take it easy. Awesome. I tell you who Ben Hannawell's alias is: Dark Prince, putting his voice through a AI voice alterator. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Ben Hannawell is a very active member of what our a legend Facebook community. What a voice on Ben, by the way. It's, it's that's it's, a you got a badass voice. It's deeper than I expected. Yeah, and it's just got a cool twang to it. He does. Now should be narrating trailers for eighties action films, <laughs> possibly. But it, look, it's a, it's a. We it's can't a, say too much. No, <laughs> that's the short answer. I, look, could we speak to the? Because I mean, I, I, I actually don't call him the Dark Prince. I just call him Darkness. Yeah, because uh, it's, it, and it's changed now. Oh, because he's well, he's living in a Spanish speaking part of the world, so it's okay. El Principe Oscura. Oh, yeah. I will never call him that. <laughs> because the reason why I call him Darkness is if you guys remember the uh, Charlie Murphy skit from uh, uh, the real Hollywood stories from Dave Chappelle's show. And it's got, um, and he's, he's saying, f*** your couch. And, 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 and he said, Charlie Murphy, Darkness. Oh! Like they're beating the shit out of Rick James. <laughs> Rick James, bitch. And he calls them darkness because at that time in Hollywood, uh, Eddie Murphy and um, Charlie Murphy were, v- were very dark skinned compared to many other people. And Rick James. Like they're like the only black dudes. Well, no, because I mean, the probably same. Wesley Snipes came in and he was <laughs> darker. But he, he, he would Wesley say, Snipes. fuck you, darkness. And I like to say the same thing about the Dark Prince. I'm always like, fuck you, darkness. Like, it's. Anyway. Dark he, Prince is a is a graduate of the Bulletproof program. He is. He trained. He he he's a jujitsu guy. Trained with us. Trained in my small group here in Sydney for a long time. Actually, did train him for a little while when I was running the jujitsu program. Yes, you did. That's and, right. And he was an epic disappointment. Yeah, has all the potential to be really good, but it doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Which you you know I mean it's a, it's just the darkness is true to his character. Yeah, he's like 
he's basically a vampire. Yeah. He could just, you know, he's just kind of ageless in a way, emotionless, but he retains a certain sense of cool even if you hate him. It's like you can't, you can't break his vibe. It's, it's fairly unbreakable and I've tried. I've beaten the hell out of that guy and he just refuses to accept. Any, and anyone that's like that harbours a special unique piece of real estate in JT's mind because he's like, that's the one that I couldn't I can't break. break him. And I, I respect it. I've pushed so hard to really bring his day down and you can't. If you, uh, if you follow me or Bulletproof on, social, on Instagram, you'll catch glimpses of the prince. Here and there. There's times, you know, when we're in the same part of the world at the same time. And, and I always make it because he, he doesn't live on social media no. at all. So I always make a point of, of, you know, posting the story there a little bit just so the fans know. Well below uh, the radar. He might just poof appear in a flutter of bats. He might actually be joining us at ADCC this year. Stay tuned so for stay that. So stay tuned for, you know, you whatever's coming out around catch there. a glimpse of the mysterious El, Dark Prince. El Principe. Next one. Hey, gents. Old man question for you. I'm a master four, 49 year old white belt, middleweight, 181 pounds. No one's in my weight division for an upcoming competition. I want to compete again. Should I go up to 195 or should I go down to compete with the Masters three? And why? Thanks. Look forward to hearing from you. Sean, what a legend. Great question. Very good question. So I think so many people in, in, um, I mean, so many people, not even master's divisions. Just, But if you're competing at local tournaments, you find yourself in this scenario. You get stuck. What do I do? Do and I? The, yeah. the event organizer, will, <laughs> it's, always, it's usually pretty bad if you're on the lighter side. They go, yeah, we'll just chuck in the next category. We've got absolute coming up. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? Because you want to you compete, right? Yeah, you've trained, you've done the thing. My personal opinion is always to play with the skill, not with the weight. That's, that's my take on it. I, I think it is better to... The, the assumption is that if people are younger, like they're in Masters 3 or Masters 2, they're more athletic or they've got more energy. It's not necessarily the case. Just so you don't spoil your own competition experience, like trying to bulk up or cut weight, stay the same and just, you know, go go against... Yeah, jump in the younger, younger category. And you might surprise yourself, you know? Like, I think there's there's a benefit to that. That, that would be what I would do. Yeah, I remember getting my ass kicked by a dude in the adult division at a comp in Melbourne years ago, and I was like, pretty sure that guy was a master's competitor. That <laughs> mother just he beat the, the shit out of me. old man strength. Yeah, and he was probably like 32. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, But yeah. I was like 28. Yeah. Like, who's this old man? So much younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I would totally, I would totally say the same thing. You, you definitely surprise yourself. And look, the beauty is the pressure's off because yeah. you're, you're, coming, you're coming down to a younger category. It's like, all right, well... I'm not, ex you know, it's I'm I'm at a slight disadvantage because that's just like cool, man. Just get in and do your thing. And I think there is, even though it's not as though you are a small human, you're you're a, you're a good sized human. I got to be honest, if you're not someone who is trying to win the absolute, going up against much heavier opponents is not ideal. I, I that's what I would say. If you're not someone who's really dead set on trying to win the absolute, if you're lower, if your body weight is below seventy five kilos or seventy kilos. Uh, don't don't go heavier. That would be my advice. I had to check. 181 pounds, 82 kilograms. Yeah, this is just a very solid human. Yeah, yeah. No decent, question. decent weight. Um, I think there's yeah, greater I would, risk uh, of injury going. Higher. Yeah, and, and also too, you get that thing where potentially you just get nullified by someone that's heavier and stronger and they're just like, shut your shit down. You're like, I couldn't even do any jiu-jitsu. There's no jiu-jitsu there. Yeah. Legends, thanks for the questions, guys. If you want to leave us one, go to the website, bulletproofofbjj.com, hit the podcast page, record us a voicemail. We'll hit you up on the next Q&A episode. Also, like and subscribe, my friends. We appreciate you all. Bam.